Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a very special episode of Calling from the Wilderness. Uh, although we are going along with our Abraham theme, we are switching it up this week in honor of Easter. If you're going to insert something and pay, pay special attention to an event, Easter is the one to do it. Where Jesus uh, passed away Good Friday, but before he did, he said, hide all the eggs. When I come back, I don't want to see one egg. I don't care what you do with it. Paint it. Hide it. Um, give it to rabbits. I just don't want to see any eggs. And so Easter this Sunday, we are celebrating that um, event. And the eggs. And hiding eggs. Uh, not really. It's a little bigger than that. And we're going to get into that. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at John chapter 20. Verses 11 to 18, you can see that on your screen. Uh, before we get in, I hope you all are doing well and having a great time. Uh, we are working on some social media stuff, Facebook pages, Instagram posts, uh, things like that, that we will uh, be sending out there into the interwebs soon so you can stay up to date and... Um, yeah, ask us questions and stuff. We want to be your friends. I want more friends. So please <laughs> come and be my friend. Won't you be my friend? Um, okay, so let's get into it. Uh, I will start reading first. Excellent. This is a reading from John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he has said these things to her. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And when she saw two angels in white, she sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet, they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing 
but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to, his, to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. All right, so um, one word or phrase that jumped out to us. Tim, what's one word or phrase that has jumped out to you? Uh, the one that, that kind of caught me um, is where it says, and she wept, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. I, I just found that very, I'd never heard that one or never kind of paid attention to it. That was just kind of hit me both times. I was like, that's just a very strange phrase to me. How about yeah. you? Um, something, something bullier than that? <laughs> well, probably, um, as, as always, uh, that she thought he was a gardener. Um, why did she think he was a gardener? Was he doing gardening things? Um, and then also the, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Um, I've never paid too much attention to that. I actually forgot it was in there. Um, so it's just kind of, it seems weird mm. or misplaced mm. in there. Yeah, that, that was kind of one of my, like the kind of the questions that I had in, in, in this is like about, you know, about what's happening, you know, physically in this story, um, because it is a, it's a very, you know, it's, it's a very kind of, yeah, physical experience, um, which is, it's, it's told that way, I think as well. And, and which then made me think about that exact phrase, because he says, you know, um, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to the father, which is, yeah, not entirely sure what's going on there. But um, so th those are my two questions is kind of like what's happening in the physicality of the story and what's happening with that kind of that sense of Jesus saying there's another step for him um, for her not to cling to him. So. Sweet. Um, I think my question is j just as we were reading this, I was thinking about uh, this time of year and how much emphasis um, we place in the Christian faith on the death of Jesus, the paying for the sins, the blood and that. Um, and then we mentioned the resurrection, but no one ever gives a reason why we emphasize or we, we talk about the, the resurrection too much. It's always Jesus died for your sins. Um, and that's pretty much the Christian faith. Um, so why is the resurrection important? What, what does it do? Uh, what does it signify? Um, mm. cause could we have a Christian faith without the resurrection? Um, mm. 
and then also uh yeah just that that gardener part uh about the the new life like um the resurrection signifying new life and um in the springtime we see that that there's death and that gives way to new life just as jesus said as the seed dies then mm -hmm. uh, a plant can sprout um so along those lines cool I'm hoping you can answer all my questions. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend I can. All right. So, where where do we want to begin? Um, okay. So let, let let's talk about uh, your in, embodiment. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think for me, like where that comes from, is um, <laughs> is feeling a real hate hate relationship with my body for like my whole life um and and not not just in like the whole i i don't have the i don't have the physicality of somebody who's on the front of a gq magazine um and and and, and i've always you know and, and I, I certainly in in my in my high school days felt felt kind of such shame of how i looked that I overcompensated in, you know, in in kind of particularly humor um, as and a very kind of strong coping mechanism. But but underpinning all of that, though, too, aside from like the whole kind of cultural view of body was this was a spiritual view of, of basically I was living in this shell, which sole purpose is to make me sin. <laughs> and, and and so like I hated I hated my body, um, and I and I still have a struggle with that. And yet, and yet, this whole resurrection story takes place in the in a very physical way. You know, even even the angels are, are you know, it's not that she saw two angels. It says she saw two angels, and they were sitting in the tomb. You know, at one at the head and one at the feet of where Jesus had laid. So, like, even the angels have a physicality to them in this story. Um, and then, and then, as you say, there's a sense of, of, you know, like, like Jesus is such a, such a person to her experience that she imagines him not to just be an apparition, but to be a gardener, something very, again, physical to which she has an experience with. And then she goes and actually testifies to that experience of what she, what she has seen with her, like, or what she's experienced with her senses, um, which is, is very much felt in herself and testifies to that to the disciples who have not yet seen um and i just think i think it's really interesting that, that the resurrection is is such a story of embodiment and 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 whether it's you know reclaiming the bodies in the way that we hear you know they we were created in the beginning of genesis or or whether it's just a sense of like god meant what god meant when jesus became incarnate was that was that the physical world was not abandoned um by god but was actually loved by god and was being saved and redeemed through god becoming our very flesh i just want to sit here and listen to you talk for 20 minutes about it <laughs> um yeah absolutely bang on um yeah there's like growing up there's definitely a dichotomy between the physical and spiritual right like um prayer and worshiping and all that was done in church and had a super spiritual emphasis um whereas the physical things like fasting was to harness your body and your sinful desires and the lusts of the flesh was everything that was physical um and then even even helping someone physically like uh getting groceries for someone or doing something that was always a stepping stone to lead to something spiritual like a mm -hmm. prayer time with them or a conversion or something like that it was never the act itself which was a um a holy act or um a sacred act between two people it was always a stepping stone to something else right something spiritual mm. um and yeah uh, we we see that we when we look at jesus's life that he 
is doing these things. And even when he's talking with Thomas and Thomas doesn't believe him, it's the physical act of touching his, his hands, the holes in his hands, that gives him the faith to be like, Jesus, it's, it's you. Not, mm. not our prayer service and then that we're going to change his mind. It's the, mm. it's the physical act, right? So there's definitely a, a, a separation between the two. And I think we need to bring those together where, where we need to be aware of even our, our physical bodies and our physical selves and the blessing and the gift that that is uh, to us, that these are created from God, that these are um, gifts to be used. And yeah, and the, yeah, and our and our image and our um, you know seeing ourselves as as images of God. Um, I I think we put too much emphasis. Yeah, we're images of God, but only our spiritual selves yeah. are images of God. Only our our prayers and that, and not our actual bodies, are yeah. images of God. And the more that we separate. And, and even with mental health and, and depression and things like that, um, we tend to think that those are maybe the the physical parts, the bad parts of the physical part, and all you need to do is pray and, you know, do some other stuff. But that's part of the gift of God and to work on that and to see that and our interactions with each other and, and all these things as sacred. Um, I think is I think is really good because if if I'm not mistaken and you can you can um, tell me I'm wrong, but the Hebrews in the Old Testament there was no separation between the the sacred and and physical to them and their worldview. It was all one thing, right? Um, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. And we we've, we've separated it that. Um, mm. Yeah, and I think that's more in defense of. Um, the Enlightenment era, when science was talking about Christianity and kind of butting up against it, and we said, "Well, well, we you can't prove this stuff because it's spiritual is separate from this. So the stuff that you can dis you can actually test and disprove that's the physical part. That's the part that you can, um, you know, run up against. That's the bad part. But the spiritual stuff you can't test. Yeah, yeah, the prayer yeah. and the spiritual stuff you can't." So, so that's us, and here's the bad stuff. And yeah. instead of you know working alongside science and that, and mm. trying to figure out the balance between the two, we've got this separation. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you think so? I'm gonna. Do you think that is a piece of what you were hinting at as well about that sense of like there's a separation from there. There seems to be a real separation from like Christianity being the faith of, of the crucified Christ um, as that the spiritual thing that, that God is doing in Christ, which is about the, you know, redemption of, of the world through the payment of our sins and that of the, of the gardener outside of the empty tomb. Um, mm-hmm. Like there, there's a, the um, theologian and pastor, Bo Sanders, and, um, and he, he's always advocated that, that actually the symbol for Christianity should never be the cross. It should always be the empty tomb. Um, yeah. And, uh, but. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think with the, the crucifixion, and, and you're right, the, the spiritual aspect of it, I think it's because you can't put limits on it. Like it's as big as our imagination is. To, to some degree, mm-hmm. right? Like we can, we can uh, attribute or put um, things on that, or believe that those things are that that's covering certain things or fighting certain things or helping us in certain ways because it's it's not concrete, it's not physical, right? Whereas the 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 resurrection, um, which I think actually does more or I shouldn't say does more, but does a lot, it mm-hmm. is the concreteness of it, right? Like it's, it's mm-hmm. that one event 
where mm-hmm. we sing songs um, and we pray that um, what Jesus did on that cross would continually work in us and our sins would be forgiven and plead the blood and all that kind of stuff that we do. Whereas the resurrection, we, we, uh, we, we look at it more as a one-time event. Like we mm-hmm. have a new life. It's a one-time event. Um, instead of looking at it every day, like, Lord, help me have a new way of seeing things. Help me live the resurrected life where I have um, passed away all the old things and now I'm living new in you. Help me to be like that gardener where I have let things die that need to die, that they may sprout new life. Um, And how am I seeing that in my everyday life? Um, I pray for people to be saved, but I don't necessarily pray for them to have, um, to live in a new life. I want Jesus to, to bring salvation to them. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily go beyond that. Anyway, I think, I think that's kind of answering your question. Maybe. I, 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 I really like actually, I, I don't <laughs> I like what you've said, um, and it challenged me to think about the stuff that I, I find kind of difficult about it. Um, you know, that idea that actually we, we see the the kind of the crucifixion as that kind of that thing, in a sense, that's continuously happening. Um, and we hark back to it um, because of all the different things we imagine, and believe into it, whereas we see the resurrection as kind of a one off um moment and, and i think you're you're right like when i think about the way that that i was taught to kind of view salvation growing up was that salvation new life you know baptism you know don't you dare try to get baptized twice yeah in a baptist right like it was it was it was like you know it's a once it's a for it's a you know it's a once for all for everything and and actually but then we spent a lot of time as you say like pushing back into that space where we where we see yeah, we're creating that 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 thing which is constantly, I guess, is gonna it almost like a black hole, right? Like we see the crucifixion as like this black hole of you know potentially of sin, which is constantly sucking us into it, and is that place by which we need to constantly go back to um, to find the truth of of what God has done for us. Um, but and then we and then we see that kind of the the resurrection or the redemption or the new life as being a, a once full you know fully done, which potentially then leads us in that. And, but I think you know go back to your first kind of question in that kind of that thought about then it leads us in this awkward middle ground by which we 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 know that that we are not living in our resurrected selves fully. Um, because of the brokenness we still feel within ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yet we have this experience of, of our life in our body, in the physical world in which we reside, while being told that actually at the heart, you know, at the heart of, w- of what we're trying to get away from is that kind of the black hole of sin, which keeps trying to drag us down through the body. Um, and the body then becomes that, you know whether whether intentionally or, or unintentionally becomes the actual focal point of where we see the pull to the black hole as compared to the pull to the resurrected self. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> like just, I was like, I, I yeah. You know, you just, you just set my mind off, so I just I just had to try to get something out. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's how it works. Eh? Like you. You you constantly say stuff to me, and I'm like, okay, then I've got to figure. Well, then this goes with this, and then that leads to this, and then that goes. Well, that just changes everything. Uh, yeah. So I wonder. So what is what's the why is crucifixion in, in important? Like why is Easter? important like we look at jesus crucifixion he paid for the our sins uh he went to hell and took back the keys of life and death 
and then he came back and then he went to heaven um is the importance of that just that he's still alive and he is able to intervene on our behalf and come into our lives or is there something deeper to that yeah i think one of the things i i was challenged at when i was training in college um was, was this guy had given a talk about about um the ascension of christ and i never grew up with the ascension being a real important thing like it was just it was our way of understanding that jesus was no longer on earth because we're like he's got this resurrected body so surely he could just live forever on earth if he wanted to um but somehow we need to make sense of the fact that he's not physically with us and so he left through the ascension and that's how we you know and then it also gives us the you know the catalyst for god sending the holy spirit to start the church so we're like it, it all fits really well um uh, but the fellow the physical was saying, jesus outside up in <laughs> space right now <laughs> yeah 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 He's hanging out yeah yeah but he was saying like the importance of the ascension is actually it also has this really key point which is that that the assumed ascended body of Christ bears itself into the presence of God and into the very person of God, all of the experiences of, of, of Christ on earth, right? So, so the, the wounds of Christ, which Thomas bears witness to by putting his fingers in them, are the wounds that Christ still has as the son of god part of the holy trinity in the presence of god while he's interceding for us and so god's very self not just the body of christ but god's very self god's very nature actually within the holy trinity now bears witness in god's self to the death resurrection of christ So his body is kind of, for lack of a better term, like a roadmap of what has happened and what has uh, transpired and physically, physically what has gone on here. I like that. I never, I never would have thought of that kind of being the reason of the, or an aspect of the ascension. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think but, too, like, okay. Oh, hold, hold on, back is back into no. the importance of of the body, right? Like, yeah, like our our embodied Christ's body, his embodiment is is such a important thing because it's a road, like it's a it's a testament to um, his his life. Like when we're looking at bodies, it's you know scars or or imperfections or or different things like that, or things that we love or things that we hate is all a testament of our life we've lived and different experiences that have happened with our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, the act of helping someone with, um, like I keep saying groceries or whatever, but what, whatever, fixing a flat tire, having a real conversation with someone that's having, that's going through a divorce or, you know, has lost someone important to them. And that, that moment, that sacred moment is only possible because of our, our human, our physical bodies and the, and the things that we've done um, and the, and the um, things that have happened to us are, are also a testament to what that, what that happens. It's like those, uh, movies about like the Russian mobsters who have like everything that they've done tattooed yeah. all over their bodies yeah. kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's like that, like, yeah. And so like, and I think, I think then that begs the question for us, like, you know, we see, we see the incarnation as God becoming flesh. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it was something you said, you know, you said at the beginning about, um, you know the way that or how did how did you say it it was something something about like you know god god kind of 
yeah, be, becomes flesh. And, but in our flesh, we don't see ourselves as made in the image of God. And, and mm. so what, what we, we interpret, we interpret our bodies. Like, like the dirty mirror kind of thing Paul was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but what's strange is like we, instead of looking at creation, the creation story, where when, when man and woman are formed and God says, let us make humankind in our own image, in the image of God, we will create them. And, and, and it's the physical creatures that are created in that space in response to that, let us make them in our image. So somewhere at the beginning of time, um, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of testament of God was that, was that creatures with physicality somehow bear the image of God. Um, and, it, and it's something about our, our physical and our spiritual. And then in Jesus, we see that affirmed in the fact that God comes in flesh, you know, in this specific time and space, um, as, com as compared to, you know, even actually, you know, the passage we'll be looking at next week with Abram, where where you know God actually comes and and is and is served um, through the hospitality of Abraham, um, but but then sorry I, I'm going on. No, that's okay. Um, I, I've got like a million questions for as soon as yeah. you're done. Yeah, but but and and so then so we've got we've got creation with you know um, being created into physicality, which bears the image of God. We've got Christ who comes incarnate into time and space being fully divine fully human and then that christ is assumed through the ascension back into the you know into the very kind of presence of god person of god um and what we what we fail to recognize i think is that is that the continuity of that is the is the physical mm -hmm. right like it it, it and, 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 it's, and it's the physical which God remains present to us in our physicality that becomes the continuity of that to not just redeem fallen creation or fall, the fall, you know fallen world, but actually to to all you know God is not redeeming something that God is then in the end going to burn. God is redeeming that which is now meant to be walking in that newness of life. Yeah. Here's, I'm going to throw something out at you, yeah. and you can tell me if it's hogwash or not. <laughs> Jesus' resurrection becoming physical again. If, if Adam and Eve created in God's image, and that was, and they were perfect before the fall, right? If Jesus' resurrection, is he becoming the most fulfilled version of himself being the image of God or I guess being God himself in that moment. And on top of that, do you think like I've always thought of heaven as like, you know, little, little, we're little spirits floating around or like angels and stuff, but is it physical? And that is, we're actually becoming the true image of God in the physicalness, just like in, in the garden, where it's the physical manifestation of our bodies. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Tell, yeah. tell me, hogwash. tell me there's a million reasons why that's not possible. Cause I'm sure there is. I was just thinking about it. Like, yeah. like if Adam and Eve with their, like you were saying with their, with their bodies, they were like the garden was perfect. Right. Um, well, I believe yeah, it I, I, not. it's yeah. still the idea, it's still the story, right? That, that the idea of perfectness is a human, is embodiment, is, is a body. And so when Christ died and he's resurrected into human form, like he could have been a ghost. Like what would it have made a difference? Like why is the body of Jesus after resurrection important? Why is it there? It must be that it's signifying or is a something, and then and then yeah, the, yeah. that he would go be, take that body and still go up into heaven. Like as you're saying, the the lineup is all body, and maybe maybe the the spiritual physical divide is actually more like this, and mm -hmm. to be. 
this fully fully in line and then fully understanding your your physicalness and and being that and joining them together into the <laughs> into the church <laughs> <laughs> of, of one step from the flannel graph you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. That's that's just come to my, my mind. It may be totally wrong. I would yeah. no, um, but I but I think I think an important place for us to start always, and I think and I do think we see this in Jesus when we actually you know take seriously the testimony to a physically resurrected Christ, is that when we go back to the beginning of the story. Um, regardless of if humans were made per perfect or if that was like the starting place of, of humanity. And, and, you know, is that, is that our, our testimony to creation is that the immaterial and material met together in a human being somehow together is us bearing the image of God. Right. And, and so, God. so then fully man of, yeah and and and, and, I, and I think like that I think the fully man is tarnishing the fully god part of him but maybe or, or that we complete or that yeah or, or that we think that they are actually two different things so mm -hmm. instead of it so if, if we <laughs> if we are made in the image of god yeah. then the image of god that we bear in ourselves is the image of something that is true yeah right and physical. So. So then, so then Christ having two natures by its very definition, it, it could, could actually, in a sense, take us away from the point, which is that, is that when we are fully human, mm -hmm. that's where we are fully the children of God. And if the children of God bearing witness to the fact that in God's self is both the physical and, you know, the material and the immaterial and everything else, which gives life to reality. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, just. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? We, we're well over 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good break. place to end it. That's a good place to end as, as any, I would say. Wow, okay, let's. Uh... Okay, let me let me let's 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 close with the uh, the Easter collect, um, which is just a, a beautiful a beautiful prayer for uh, yeah. Which I think here we are. So Easter Sunday in the Church of England, the collect prayer is this: Grant, Lord, that we who are baptized into the death of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection through his merits, who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. bang a -rang. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> man okay well thank you for joining us uh looking forward to doing this again next week uh this weekend i'm hoping to put up some info on our social media sites so you can find us in different places yeah. um, and, if, and if you're wondering what derek's even talking about basically sometime over the next week we will actually put together uh, a, a proper announcement <laughs> <laughs> that will be, uh, you know, where you can reach us, how the format is going to go forward, uh, and different ways that we can connect. It'll make it easier uh, across many different platforms. And, and uh, we got and Facebook, it. we got Instagram, we got Gmail. Do we have a Twitter? I don't know if we have a Twitter. We got yeah, yeah, we, we're there. We got Twitter. We're gonna. We're just like all the cool hip kids. We have put this this podcast or whatever you want to call it into physical form into these different social media sites that you can access with your physical fingers and typing things yeah amen in in incarnate the digital yes okay God bless. have a great holy week guys Toodles. Yeah. love y'all <laughs>